crowd. Good evening. Uh, first, I want to welcome you on behalf of the uh, Institute of Politics here at the University of Chicago, uh, on behalf of the law school and Dean Schill. We're so pleased to be co-sponsoring this uh, program uh, with him and the law school. Uh, you know, I came to this campus uh, 41 years ago, and on the very first day, uh, I went to an assembly uh, at Mandel Hall, and at the, uh, up on the uh, podium was a very distinguished, bow-tied, bespectacled man. Uh, and it was uh, Edward Levy, who was president of the university. And I know that on that day he imparted some encouragement and some uh, inspiration. Uh, but I can only remember one thing that he said. He said, uh, uh, and I remember it as if it, ha it was yesterday, he said, four years uh, from now, 40% of you won't be here. And I looked left and I looked right and I slumped in my chair because I knew he was looking right at me uh, when he said that. And the irony of it was that four years from uh, that time, he wasn't here uh, because President Ford had called him uh, to Washington uh, to save the Justice Department and our justice system after the catastrophe, uh, the devastation of, uh, of Watergate. Uh, and one of the things that Attorney General Levy did to help restore public trust in uh, the Justice Department and our system of justice was to set up a public integrity unit uh, in uh, the Justice Department. And uh, one of the young recruits for that uh, public in integrity unit is the man I have the honor uh, of introducing uh, today. Eric Holder served there for uh, 12 years, and he prosecuted some very high-profile cases, including some uh, arising from the celebrated uh, ABSCAM investigation of Congress. He was appointed by uh, President Reagan to the uh, Superior Court of the District of Columbia and later served uh, under President Clinton as the uh, U.S. Attorney uh, for uh, the District of Columbia, where uh, he led the successful prosecution of Dan Rostenkowski. Uh, before rising to the uh, position of Deputy uh, Attorney General. And in 2009, uh, President Obama appointed Eric Holder uh, as Attorney General of the United States, the first African American uh, to hold that post. Now, the job of Attorney General has always been challenging, uh, but in an age of, of terrorism and, and cyber war and monstrously complex financial uh, schemes, uh, it's fair to say it's never been more complicated and challenging uh, than it is today, except perhaps in those very difficult days uh, in which Edward Levy uh, assumed the post. And uh, General Holder has a very proud legacy. He's been a steadfast champion for the durability and efficacy of our Article III uh, civilian courts. He has revived Justice's role in securing the civil rights of every American. He uh, withdrew the government from its representation uh, of Congress around the Defense of Marriage Act uh, and um, uh, because he and the president believed it was constitutionally dubious. He exponent he's ex exponentially increased the prosecution of health care uh, fraud cases uh, and recovered billions of dollars uh, in uh, taxpayer money. Uh, that was stolen from the Medicare and Medicaid system. And perhaps most relevant for tonight's program uh, is that he has insisted on the high ethical standards uh, that Edward Levy uh, uh, held so dear and set when he was Attorney General. And I should tell you that Eric Holder has one other uh, distinction, uh, great distinction, uh, actually has many great distinctions, but one other I'm going to mention tonight, and that is he's a graduate of Stuyvesant High School uh, in New York, eclipsing uh, two other uh, graduates in importance, uh, Bob Zimmer and me. Uh, and I say that without a trace of resentment. Uh, so with that, uh, let, let us welcome the uh, 82nd Attorney General of the United States, my friend Eric Holder. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening. 
Let's see, yeah. Well, yeah, good evening. It is evening. All right, thank you, uh, David, for those kind words. And it's true, we did go to the same high school. I went in a different century than, uh, than, than, than he did. He's a lot younger than me, regardless of how he might look. He, I'm actually, he's actually younger than I am. Um, but I want to thank him for uh, his dedication in the Obama administration and also throughout his career and for uh, David's commitment to training future generations of political leaders uh, right here uh, at his alma mater. Now, it is a pleasure to be with you all at the University of Chicago tonight, and it's a privilege to stand with Dean Schill, uh, members of the Levy family, leaders from throughout Chicago's legal community, uh, Attorney General John Ashcroft, and each of our distinguished panelists, and, and so many of the faculty members and students who have, who have always made the University of Chicago really an exceptional place. Now, I want to thank you for welcoming me to your beautiful campus, for getting me out of Washington, D.C., and also for providing a forum for tonight's important discussion as we, we celebrate the legacy of our nation's 71st Attorney General, uh, Edward Levy, and refer, reaffirm our shared commitment to building on the work that really defined his truly remarkable career. Now, it's fitting that we come together this evening here in, in Hyde Park at an institution and in a wonderful city that Attorney General Levy was always proud to call home on a campus that shaped him and which he would in turn help to shape. As a young man, as a student, as a faculty member, as dean of the law school, as the university's first provost, and later as its president, Edward, Le Edward Levy was part of this community of learning for nearly his entire life, from kindergarten through his retirement over the course of a career that would take him from the south side to Washington and then back again, he remained an essential member of the University of Chicago family. His contributions were publicly recognized by another great attorney general, Robert F. Kennedy, exactly 49 years ago tomorrow during a speech at your law school in which Attorney General Kennedy praised Dean Edward Levy for his commitment to public service, community concern, and intellectual inquiry. Now, by that time, Dean Levy had already spent several years at the Justice Department, serving in the Antitrust Division and in something called the War Division, among other assignments during the Second World War. By the mid-1970s, he was president of this university and had already built a, a national reputation as a, as a brilliant scholar, a faithful steward of the law, and a passionate servant of all whom the law protects and empowers. He was really widely known as a principled and independent leader who, as he once put it, tried to radiate the values of this institution at all times. And he was in many ways a perfect choice, a perfect choice to become Attorney General of the United States after President Gerald Ford took office. In a moment of national crisis, at a time of almost unprecedented difficulty, and during a period when the faith of the American people in the government and the reputation of the Justice Department had been badly shaken by the Watergate scandal. Now, into this atmosphere of cynicism, Attorney General Levy brought an air of calm. He raised standards. He fought for transparency. And he restored a sense of integrity. He rejected both politics and ideology, insisting, rightfully, that every decision be based solely on the facts and on the law. He brought a fractured Justice Department back together, and he inspired his colleagues to redouble their efforts, reminding them that, quote, no task has more to do with the future of our country than the work in which you are presently engaged. Now, even more importantly, as Jack Fuller's new book demonstrates, Attorney General Levy worked hard, really worked hard, to win back the trust of the American people and to rebuild public confidence in the department. He taught an entire generation of citizens and legal professionals, including me, that when it comes to expanding opportunities and seeing that justice is done, even a single person can make a difference. And that all of us, all of us have both the power and the responsibility to try. In 1975, when Attorney General Levy took office, I was still in law school at Columbia University in New York. It's another, another place. Um, <laughs> like all who are old enough to remember Watergate, I will never forget those tumultuous days or the poisonous political climate that the scandal created. Now, despite this climate 
and in part because of Edward